How's it going guys? My name is Eric Van Wilderman and I'm going to be making a special video for you guys. Now, a lot of people ask me, Eric, how can I do what you're doing? How do I get a job playing games on YouTube? That sounds really easy. I want to do that. And a lot of people ask me that advice. So I'm making this video to kind of give some advice to aspiring Let's Players who want to do what I'm doing. Maybe even if you are Let's Playing right now, you can take some bits of advice from it too. So I have to preface this video by saying that this is advice from my perspective, things that I've learned and things that I hold dear that are important to me as a Let's Player. Every different YouTuber will give you a different set of advice. So first off, this video is not gonna be about anything technical with YouTube at all. The technical stuff is not that important. Well, it's important. But it's not important for me to tell you, because quite frankly, if you want to learn about the technical side of YouTube, there's this really good website that I use when I have a question about it. It's called Google.com. It's really good. You type in questions and it gives you answers. It gives you comparisons between different softwares and hardware you can use. So you <laughs> just use Google.com. There's lots of information there. What I want to do with this video is I want to give you information that is not on Google. Information that you should live by because if you live by this information then the technical stuff will just come. So there's three things that you should consider before you even get started. The first one is kind of obvious. Do you even like games? You are about to make a YouTube channel that's based on gaming and commentary over gaming. If you don't like games, what are you doing starting a YouTube channel about it, you freak? <laughs> if you're starting a gaming YouTube channel because you think it's the big thing right now and you just want to make some money, well, you're, you're a scumbag, okay? Don't do that. Nobody likes that kind of guy. So the second one is a lot less obvious than the first, but it's still kind of obvious, is uh, do you enjoy making videos? Because, I mean, you like gaming, that's great. But you need to enjoy making videos too, because you're you're making videos. You're, you're not just uh, having people watch you play games in your house. You need to make videos on YouTube so people can watch it in their home. And that's a whole different ball game. You will get better at making videos only if you enjoy making videos. If you enjoy uh, video editing, you'll find cool little bits that you can throw in there to make your videos better, your videos will get clearer, and you'll become a better video maker for YouTube. If you don't enjoy it, you're just gonna be stuck thinking that the videos that you make are good enough and you don't really need to improve. And that's a rut you can get stuck in and then people wonder, I've uploaded so many videos but why don't people watch them? Well, it's because you didn't improve your videos. The third thing, which is a whole lot less obvious, but still kinda, is do you like to entertain people? Do you even like people? Because you're making videos for people to watch. You gotta like people and you gotta like entertaining people. I hate to say, you have to. Now there's a lot of different kinds of entertainment. You can be entertaining people with your gaming skills because it's exciting to watch. Like, oh my god, that was a cool little uh, Black Ops montage he made. Or you can entertain people with your commentary because people think you're funny or interesting. You know, I, I like to think I'm funny and interesting. <laughs> but yeah, maybe not. But, you know, I, I like to think I'm in that category at least, okay? And I try my best to make my videos more entertaining in that way. You can also be more entertaining in ways of giving information. Like an example is like Chugga Conroy has Let's Plays of Nintendo games and he gives a plethora of information while he plays them. It's very interesting to watch because he has a passion about the games that he plays. Gives you information on all the stats and stuff. There's many different ways to entertain people, but you need to want to entertain people in some way or another. All right, so once you've considered those three things, uh, uh, now we can start going on with the actual advice for Let's Playing itself. Listen carefully. First off, you are going to suck. Right when you start, you're gonna suck so bad, and it's just natural, okay? You are going to suck, but you're gonna get better at doing something. No one is amazing at something the first time they do it. I mean, some people have a natural talent and they're okay, you know, but you're never gonna be great the first time. So what you have to do is you have to not be complacent with your videos. You should upload your first video, you should look at it and go, Hmm, I wonder what can I improve on? How can I be better? How can I commentate better? What kind of video editing can I do to make this better? So one of the ways to get better is when you think you're sucking is watch other YouTube Let's Players 
And as you're watching them, write down the pros and cons of what you liked and what you didn't like about them. Don't just take everything that they do as a positive. Write down what you liked, what you didn't like, and how you can apply that to the videos that you want to make. That is the best way to improve, and it's the best way to kind of create your own identity. Because you don't want to just take like everything that one Let's Player does and be like, I'm going to do that exact same thing. You want to create your own identity on YouTube that's based on your own personality. An entertaining version of your personality. The next thing is obvious, but I got to say it because a lot of people that ask me on advice on how to make videos, like how to become a Let's Player, like upload like one video every two months and it's just okay. That's not okay. You gotta work hard. You gotta work really hard. People think me playing games on YouTube is just me sitting here playing games and then I'm done playing games and I'm like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden there's like a well edited video upline. That's not the case. It doesn't happen like that. You need to work hard at improving your commentary. You need to work hard at improving your videos, at learning the programs, learning certain programs. You gotta take the time to get good at Photoshop so you can edit images that you can put into your videos or you can use them as thumbnails. You just gotta get better at doing that kind of stuff. And it takes time. You should, you don't have to take it all in at once. You, you know, you can start off slow and slowly learn a new thing each video. Oh, hey, for this video, I'm going to try to make a cool thumbnail. Uh, for this next video, I'm going to try to improve um, cutting my video at certain points better so it flows better. And, you know, you can focus on little things and you can slowly improve over a long time. But you need to improve. Even if it's a slow improvement, you need to always be improving. All good YouTubers are always improving. Even the big ones like PewDiePie and... Markiplier, they're always doing things to improve their videos. Always. Behind the scenes that you don't see. They're trying out new things. And you have to too. And that requires hard work. A lot of people think doing this is easy. It's not easy. <laughs> you gotta work really hard. I worked on my YouTube channel thank- well I wouldn't say thanklessly. There were a few very loyal followers for one year. And I didn't make a penny off of this for one year. And then I started making like, you know, chump change for another year. And then I was like, oh wow, and the channel suddenly exploded last year and I started making a, a decent cash so I can just like survive. I'm not, I'm not a rich dude here. I just love what I do and I'm making enough to live on and so I'm doing it. Okay, so I, I worked every day on the channel, almost every day, while I was working full time. So I'd work full time, I'd come home, I'd work like three to six hours on the YouTube channel, go to sleep, and I do it all over again. And I did that for a year with not seeing any money, no benefits. Just, I love doing it. And so you gotta work your ass off, thanklessly. It's the hardest thing for new Let's Players. People expect that they'll just upload one or two videos and they'll be insta-famous. It's really hard when you're a small YouTuber. Getting your first 100 subs is the hardest thing in the world. Oh my God. You are starting from rock bottom. You're starting from zero. Some people, uh, because <laughs> you are at zero subscribers, will be discriminatory towards you. They will just flat out discriminate. They'll be like, hey, guess what? I think your video sucks because you have like two subscribers. And you must suck because you only have two subs, so you gotta suck. You're gonna deal with people like that when you're small. You just gotta push through it. You gotta not focus on the negativity. Even if you've managed to entertain like one or two people, that's amazing for just making something out of nothing and entertaining someone. That's an amazing thing that you've done. So you gotta focus on the positive. And once you climb up to the first 100, it just gets easier as you get more and more subscribers. So, uh... Power through. The first bit is hard and you're going to want to quit. And that ties right back into the working hard part. I almost quit twice because I was just like, oh, I'm working so hard on this. But not many people are watching my videos. I almost quit twice when I was starting in the first year. But I'm lucky I pressed on because your hard work will pay off. But you need to put the time in. And I'm talking a shit load of time. And that also ties back into the loving what you're doing. You got to love the... Playing games, making videos, and entertaining people. Because if you don't love what you're doing, you're doing something that you hate to do for free. If you don't like doing this, if you're like, oh man, I gotta make a video, I don't want to. Uh, you know, sometimes people like get tired and they don't want to and they make videos anyways. That's okay, you know, sometimes. But in general, you need to love what you're doing. Because if you don't, like, if you don't sit down to make a video and you're not like, yeah, I get to make a video now, then, well, damn. 
you're going to be doing something you hate to do for a long time to end up being successful. And then why would you even want to do something you don't like to do anyways? Find a job that you love to do. So you're not going to have many subscribers at the beginning, but the ones that you do have, show them some love. Like, they are basically giving you their time. They're, they're taking their time, which is a very limited resource in people's lives, and they're giving it to you. They're giving you their time. If they comment, comment back to them, okay? As you get bigger, it gets harder and harder to do. It's hard for me to comment to everyone now, but I still do. I spend a little bit of time every day responding to comments. Show them some love. They are showing you love by being there for you. you got to show them some love back. All right? That includes a lot of things, too. You should start some social media like Twitter. People want to know more about you. You know, share some things about your life on Twitter, right? Even if you just have a few followers, people will really be interested in what you are like outside of YouTube as well. So show them a little bit of love. Go the extra distance. Make it not just about you making videos, but make it about them and, uh, you know, they'll love you back for it, which is great. And I'm not trying to say that as, like, a psychological manipulation thing. I'm just saying that they've they've given you their support. Now, you need to give them your support as well. It's a two-way street. It's a community that you're building here. It's not just like, hey, everyone focus on me! I'm amazing! I mean, I do that sometimes. But, you know, I, I try to uh, show everyone some support as well. My last piece of advice, which this all ties in back to each other though, are there are going to be a lot of people that want to do what you're doing. There's going to be a lot of people. Why are you special? Why do people want to give you their time and not somebody else? Something to think about. There's no straight answer for that either, but it's something you got to think about as you're going through your journey to try to become a Let's Player. This is the last piece of advice I'm going to give you. This one is really important. This was actually covered by my friend Ojichan on his channel. You can check it out. There's a link in the description down below to his video. It's basically when you're first starting out on YouTube, you're going to feel all alone. And uh, what you're going to want to do initially is to get recognized. You're going to want to reach out to bigger YouTubers. You're going to say, hey, Eric, let's like uh, collab sometime. But that's... No, that's not how it works. I, I collab with people that I like. I collab with my friends that I've met on YouTube, that we've made relationships together with. I don't collab with people that just ask me, Hey Eric, let's collab, whether they're bigger or smaller than me. If I don't know someone, if someone just comes to me and says, Hey Eric, collab. Oh, you know, unless PewDiePie came to me and said, Hey Eric, let's collab, I'd be like, Oh shit, yeah! But I mean, you know, that's just special circumstance. Shh, don't tell anyone. Where was I? Yeah, make friends on YouTube. Go to other channels that you enjoy watching. Watch their videos. Give them your feedback on it. Develop relationships that way. Because uh, those are friends that might even be lifelong friends after that. Friends that uh, will help you out too. And that ties back into the technical aspect of it. Because when you have a group of friends together, people that you really enjoy hanging out with, you guys are going to help each other out with the technical stuff. Like, oh hey, I found out about this, I found out about that. So how I made friends is I joined a Let's Play group on Facebook of all aspiring Let's Players who wanted to make gaming videos. Met them on Facebook, and we talked about technical stuff within the group, and I ended up befriending uh, a few of them, like lifelong friends. Um, a few of them, like there's a lot of them I still keep into contact with today, and a few of them are still doing the Let's Play thing. Two of them that you might know, uh, Swingpoint and Bratman, I met them in that group, and we were very, very small. The nice thing about having those friends is we were always very comfortable with each other because we clicked really easily, right? Um, and that's why you shouldn't just collab with people you don't like it's because you're not going to click very well there's not going to be a lot of synergy and you're basically just doing it to get yourself bigger but it's people will see through that right people will instantly see through that and they're not going to like it so when you have friends you get to do that in a very comfortable setting and you also improve upon yourself because you'll look at your friends videos and be like oh wow look at that they did this cool like editing thing and uh, you can ask them, like, how did you do that? So uh, not only does having friends makes it so you can make collaborations with them and you can uh, spread your channel out that way, but you can also have them to rely on when it comes to improving yourself. They can give feedback on your videos. Um, you can ask them technical questions that they might know that you don't because there's only so much that you can know. Everyone has a different set of information in their heads. When you have friends, you can do that, and it's... Good, it's really comfortable too because you have friends, they're friends, right? They're friends that are doing the same thing that you're doing. 
That's that's an amazing thing, right? It's good to have comrades like that. It's really nice. That's all I really wanted to say. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to be a Let's Player, I hope you can take some of this advice and you can apply it to yourself. Um, even if you aren't a Let's Player, some of this advice you can apply it to your own lives. Like if you're going to learn a foreign language or if you want to get a job or, you know, pass some hard courses in university. Some, some of this information can apply to that as well. But yeah, I mean, some of it is specific to Let's Playing, but a lot of it is general. But I mean, that stuff, even though this is seems very general, it's super important. So important. This is more important than the technical stuff. The technical stuff will come. So yeah, I really hope you can take some information and uh, you can apply it. Well, I really hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, guys, peace.